What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cougar Culture Podcast. You guys should know my voice by now. I am Dorian Alert. I have been a broadcaster, writer, uh, of, and I am half, or I should say one quarter, of who President Repolette likes to call the voices of Kane University. Uh, I am, of course, not alone. Here comes another one of the, the quarter of the voices of Kane University, my partner, Jish Sikolsky. What's going on, Jish? Hey, hey, here I come. <laughs> How's it going, Dorian? Uh, I'm uh, very happy to be here again. Uh, thank you for having me yet again. And, uh, you know, we're uh, we're headed towards playoffs. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll jump right back into it in a second. I do want to say thank you, everyone, for listening. If you are a returning listener or a new listener, thank you so much. Make sure that you keep up with us on Kane Athletics social media. You can find us at Kane Athletics on Twitter and Instagram. You can also listen to our episodes on Spotify, Apple Music, or you can go on YouTube, just type in Cougar Culture Podcast, and you will be able to hear our wonderful voices. But without further ado, let's start off with After the Whistle. So Jish and I have been prematurely ending the men's volleyball season for quite a while now, but now it is officially over. They unfortunately lost in the ECAC finals. But we did walk away with a few awards. Rookie Raheem Eulens walked out with Rookie of the Year, and Duncan Belke mm-hmm. also made first team all and Jack. So congratulations to those two on just incredible seasons. Yeah, and we, we talked to well, – this is going to come later, but we did talk to the men's volleyball team, and they have nothing but high praises for Eulens and of other uh, freshmen as well, uh, Quincy Roy, both of them were very, very good, and they have such high expectations for the years to come for this squad. So congratulations, Raheem. Congratulations, Duncan. Absolutely. And we are going to move on to baseball. Baseball, unfortunately, has been struggling uh, since the last time we recorded. They're currently 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games. They're 1-4 coming into the end of the baseball regular season. Um, for the week of April 18th, they did have pitcher of the week in Colin Kiernan. Congratulations. But, you know, just the last couple of losses have been heartbreakers, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Two losses it, to Rowan by one run each. And you can speak on Montclair. Yeah, the, we, Montclair blew the doors off of us. There's no way around it. I mean, there were, there were two games and, uh, and Montclair outscored Kane by a total of 36 runs to one. They were shut out in the second game. Just really tough sledding for the Cougars late into the season. That's not what you want to do, especially going into the playoffs. Absolutely not. But I'm sure Coach Alvera will make sure the team is ready to play in their right. first NJAC playoff matchup. Uh, if we look at the standings of the NJAC at the end of the regular season, Rowan did come away with first place, followed by Montclair State, William Patterson, and Kane ended up with the fourth seed in the NJAC. TCNJ mm-hmm. ended up with five, and Rempo with the sixth seed. Following Red right. Bull was Rutgers Newark, Stockton, NJCU, and Rutgers Camden to round out the NJAC. Yeah, we're playing uh, William Patterson on the road tomorrow. We're going to save that for uh, after the whistle, but playoffs are coming up, and we will be hosting the NJAC tournament at Kane. so I'll, I'll be on the call for that. You're going to want to tune in. Absolutely. I'll, and, you know, I'll be, I'll be roaming around a little bit, making <laughs> sure I watch a little bit of baseball, a little bit of softball here and there. But like right. I said, we'll get we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, speaking of softball, actually, softball has gone nine and one in their last 10 games. They had Eliza Filas, who won Rookie of the Week two, week, two weeks in a row for the week of April 18th and April 25th. Mm-hmm. The softball team is rolling. Yeah, no, speaking more on Filas, it's definitely that's not her first, first Rookie of the Week. It's not even her first Player of the Week. She has been on fire all season long. I would be shocked if she didn't win at least – rookie of the year she's been having a tremendous rookie season guiding Kane along with other talents like Jen Mayorchuk and Gabby Fredette all the way to the second seed in the end 
Hey, you mentioned Gabby Fredette. She is a big hit and a home run waiting to happen. She's mm-hmm. hit several throughout the season, including an incredible grand slam that we heard John call last episode. She's she is absolutely incredible. And, you know, she's a really good shortstop as well. If if we look at the NJAC standings, Rowan did win the regular season title going 30 and 8, 15 and 3 overall in the NJAC. But Kane tied with tied with Rowan going 15 and 3 in the NJAC as well. They Kane came in second place. Ramapo came in third, TCNJ in fourth, Stockton in fifth, and Montclair State had the sixth seed. Following Montclair State was William Patterson, Rutgers Camden, Rutgers Newark, and NJCU ended the season at the 10 seed. And now it's on to lacrosse, both men and women's, both made the playoffs. We'll talk about the men first. It's been a very eventful season for them. A lot of blowout victories, but uh, a lot of their honors were, a lot of their, excuse me, a lot of their efforts were honored with the CSAC end of year awards. So uh, I'm just going to read through a few names here, a few accolades as well. Nick Thorne was named the CSAC Rookie of the Year. Congratulations, Nick. We've had 13 all a- all CSAC selections. The first team included names like Brady Moore, who scored his 100th point this season a few weeks ago, Matt Palmieri, Tom Francie, the goalie, Anthony Porter, Tommy Pellegrino, and Joe McNulty, who got his 100th career ground ball against Bryn Athen. They were all on the first team. Connor Batcher, Christian Balcom were second team selections. Christian Balcom also was part of the D3 Christian Balkan was also selected to the D3 USILA slash Dynamic Team of the Week. Congratulations to him coming in as the backup face-off specialist behind Nick Maffa. He really stepped in and filled out rolling quite well. While Kenny Yeager, Steve Thorne, and Dante Magliano were all honorable mentions. Congratulations to those three as well. Alex Hufford was selected to the CSAC All-Sportsmanship Team. Congrats to him. As for their success this week, they did lose to Montclair State in their season finale, but they will be seeing Montclair State again in these CSAC playoffs. Let's go through some of those standings. Stockton came in first with a 6-0 record in the CSAC, 14-2 overall. Montclair State in second, 5-1 in the CSAC, 11-3 overall. Kane went f- coming in third, got 4-2 in the CSAC, 10-5 overall, and Rosemont rounds out the playoffs at 3-3 three three in the CSAC, 8-9 overall. Cairn, Bryn, Athen, and Keystone all just missed the cut. And as for the women, they barely sneaked into the playoffs in a must-win game over Stockton this past weekend. It was quite a great match, and they are now in the playoffs. Uh, I thought it was all over after they lost to Montclair State. Uh, the match prior, but they were able to find their way into the four seed. It was a great season for them as well, and I'm glad that they have extended their season. The standings in the NJAC for women's lacrosse, TCNJ is in first as per usual. Rowan in second, Stockton in third. Kane rounds out the playoffs with Montclair State just missing the cut. Ramapo and Rutgers Camden rounding out the entire NJAC, and we will be playing TCNJ in the playoffs. So we kept it close last time. So there's no need to give up hope now. Hey, I remember watching that game. You know, TCNJ had a big first quarter, but we came back in the second quarter and made it made it a close one, six to five overall in, in the first half. Kept it kept them scoreless in the entire in the entire second quarter. And you know, it just got a little bit away from them in the in the second half. But like you said, Jish, it was close. And I'm looking forward to this matchup. If we head over to another sport, women's tennis, unfortunately, their season has ended. They finished the season 0-5, including a loss against Rutgers Camden. Um, You know, they had they had a good, relatively good season, six and ten. They've been improving every year. So next season will be an interesting one. If we look at the NJAC standings, TCNJ to no one's surprise, TCNJ finished in first place in women's tennis. Uh, NJCU followed, Stockton was third, Rutgers Camden in fourth, Kane ended up in the fifth place spot, Ramapo ended up in sixth, and William Patterson in seventh. So congratulations to women's tennis on a successful season. And another sport that, you know, was was very successful this year, esports, 
they rounded out their final playoff games several weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, their Madden 22 team, who was the final team standing, did lose in the third round. But again, he's been very successful or the, the Madden 22 team has been very successful early on, including a finals run in the fall semester. So, you know, their future is bright and I'm really looking forward to what they can do come fall, having a full season, uh, having a full season within the East, the brand new esports cafe that is absolutely beautiful. You know, I, I'm looking forward to what they can do in the future. One more quick announcement. In uh, Several weeks ago, we did have senior day for men's lacrosse, softball, and the women's tennis team. I would like to ha have a big shout out to the seniors who are graduating, uh, including on men's lacrosse, Nick Maffa, Drew Campanella, Brady Moore, Caleb Loran. Tyler Brooks, Kyle Ryder, Justin Aridano, Aridondo, Nick Fischetti, Bryce Berger, Vinny Campbell, Ben Martin, Michael Yukis, Alex Hufford, Joey McNulty, and Thomas Franci. On softball, Paige Metz, Jen Majorchuk, Skylar Hangleveld, Tara Doxius, Sarah Zangle, and Heather Clevenger. And on women's tennis, Jen Bayon. Angelica Nino, Jada Mack, and Sneha Patil. Congratulations to all of you, and, you know, good, good luck moving forward. That was a lot of talking, Jish. So now it is time for all of you to sit back and listen to our interview that we did with the men's, men's volleyball team on this edition of Cougar Quick Hits. <laughs> Joining us on the podcast now are four seniors from the men's volleyball team. We're joined by Duncan Belkey, Zach Knoll, Maxwell Thompson, and Chris Naranjo. What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? Thank you guys again for uh, coming on with us. Uh, our first question is for you, Duncan. This year you step into a much larger scoring role with the departure of some All-American teammates. How confident were you taking in, uh, taking that mantle, like stepping into that role? Um. Yeah, definitely not very at the start of the year. Uh, it kind of grew as time went on, and I played more. But this was kind of my first year ever playing on the right side. So I don't think I was ready when the season came around. But uh, all my teammates definitely helped me into it and stuff. So it was a fun year regardless. I, I had a blast. So. For sure. And I know Jish and I, we, when we were recording our episodes, we were going through awards just about every week or looking at numbers and your numbers absolutely blew us away. So you, you did a great job from the beginning of the season all the way through. Thank you. I appreciate that. Like I said, it was funny. It was, it was good. It was good knowing that uh, the work had paid off to some extent. Absolutely. And my next question goes for you, Chris. You were one of many players who stepped in to make an, an impact right away this season. How valuable was it for you and for the team in general for you to get all the playing time that you did? It was I was taken off guard, to be honest, when I got that uh, that rookie of the week award. But I was definitely happy to contribute to the team, especially being my one and only year. I always wanted I was saying before I started the season, I want to be like a one season wonder. So I think I did that for the most part. Yeah, you for sure did. Um, taking on more of a defensive specialist role. Our next question is for you, Zach. Um, you really had a great ability to set up your teammates. A top two finish in the NJAC and assists. A top seven finish in the CBC. What kind of things do you do as a center to make sure that your teammates are so successful? I mean, for us, a lot of things we say in volleyball is just better the ball. Um, so that, like, no matter what pass I'm given, I'm just trying to put up the best ball I can for whoever's. Uh, whoever's ready and for setters a lot of time it's just giving the ball to who's hot and who's going to make the best play against whoever we're playing against and my next question goes for one of those players that another player that made a huge step up this season Maxwell your numbers took an absolute climb and leap this season if I were to go through the your stats from 2019 all the way up until this year, three kills in 2019, 18 in 2020, 27 in 2021, and this year 118. And even defensively, you went from six digs to 10 to 16 to 57 this season. You know, what kind of work 
went into that knowing that you sat behind a few all Americans your those first three years? Um, a big part of it was actually being able to get on the court and have the ability to actually work on it. So being behind all those all Americans, like a lot of us didn't get the chance to step in at practice and all that stuff just to get better simply. And then, you know, not having the biggest roster really gave opportunities to players like Duncan, Zach, myself from you know, the last three years where we had 22 as an average player roster and we had like 16 this year. That started getting bigger throughout the season, which really helped in practice a lot. But getting the opportunity itself really helped. Right. Yeah, for sure. It definitely was a shortened roster this year. I know you guys were adding on players midway through the season. And um, for Kane Volleyball Standards, it was kind of an up and down season. This question's for Zach. What positives can you draw away from this season, despite some of the highs and lows of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think for us as a team, we definitely ended on a good note. Um, I think the future of the program is on an upward slope, especially with the new coaches we've added. So hopefully um, in the next few years, we can get back to winning conferences and heading to the tournament um, with the management they'll have in the next few years. And you mentioned really quick a few of those, uh, the that the future is really bright and a couple of those uh, were freshmen this season that stepped up in huge moments, including Raheem and Quincy. What can you say about them and a couple of the other freshmen? I know DeAndre was on the team. What can you say about them and the way that they fit into the rhythm and flow of this team? Uh, and any of you can answer that one. I mean, I can start. Um, honestly, when I think about all those guys, Reem, Quincy, DeAndre, Ryan, like I just think about raw potential. Like all of them have got a lot of potential to continue to get better. Same thing with like Luke too. Like next year, all those guys are just going to be so good. I think next year they're going to be a better team just because – all those guys have gotten way more experience and they're going to be prepared to like truly step it up. I mean, I can speak, especially on behalf uh, of if anyone else, I mean, else. I think we're losing it. <laughs> <little bit. laughs> a little bit. All right. Anyways, for Raheem, I mean, for him, it definitely comes down to a little bit uh, of experience. Like the kid is a freak athlete. If you've watched him play, you've never seen anybody jump like that naturally. Like it's unfair to a lot of us. Um, so I think for him, he'll probably go back home to St. Martin, play a lot of beach, which will help court awareness and making smart decisions. So I think he and Quincy next year are going to have a crazy year if they both keep playing a lot. Yep. You got you back, Jish. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Our next question is for you, Duncan, as well. Um, you walked away from the season with several awards, including an all CVC selection. What does that award mean to you? Um, it means a lot for sure. Uh, I feel like all the hard work finally kind of paid off. Um, I don't know. I it, It's like I put in my time and now it's finally, you know, it's all happening. But like, I could have gotten there without everyone else in the program. Um, so I would take it as a program wide award more than anything, right? Like I can't do anything if I don't get the passes and I can't do anything if I don't get the sets. So, you know. We mentioned it, all of you guys are seniors. So, and, and you were all honored on senior day. So I, we really want to know what's next for all of you. That's a scary question. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least for me, I think there's a there's a team back home that I might play for in terms of volleyball, in terms of just life, I'm gonna go back home, get ready to go to school. Hopefully join the, the workforce in some <laughs> manner. We'll see. Who wants to go next? 
Sure, I'll go. So as far as for me, I'm still going to be playing volleyball till like I die, basically. But um, that's besides the point. Uh, career wise, I'm actually I have an internship with the Jets this summer. Since Kane partnered with the Jets, I'm going to be over there being an AT as like a apprentice and then possibly move into like a full time position. Uh, I'll go next. Mine's no. <laughs> Uh, it's not like glamorous or anything. I have another semester left. So I'm planning on in that semester to get my certification in personal training and possibly become a licensed nutritionist if possible. And then, you know, figure it out from there. For me, um, in terms of volleyball this summer, hopefully we'll be playing some grass tournaments with my boy Duncan. Pottstown, baby. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, in regards to life, after graduation, I'm headed to medical school in a month and a half. So be busy. Probably won't have a lot of time after that to play much volleyball. But when I can, I definitely will. All right, Jish. And that, that was a great interview. Great way to wrap up the season. And I'm looking forward to and good luck to the seniors of the men's volleyball team moving forward as they do leave Kane. And now it is time to go beyond the competition with a Benish Athletics Hall of Famer for softball, Courtney Yard. <laughs> Our next guest is another member of the 2021 Benish Athletics Hall of Fame. I am pleased to introduce Courtney LaRoe, but when she was here at Kane, she was known as Courtney Yard. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. So we're going to jump right into the questions. And my first question is kind of is kind of a general one. What brought you to Kane specifically? What brought me to Kane was um, the teaching program. I went to go to be a teacher and I am a teacher at the high school I actually went to. Um, and I know they had a good education program. And also their D3 softball program was one of the best as well. You know, the NJAC conference is always competitive. So um, I knew I wanted to go more of D3 um, and I want, still wanted to be super competitive. So Kane was just kind of the fit for me. What was that recruiting process kind of like from high school into college? Um, honestly, it was madness. <laughs> it, uh, I, I was between, you know, a million schools at one point when I first get, was getting recruited. I remember going to the travel tournaments and, you know, the coaches were all over and, you know, as a, what is it, 16, 17 year old trying to get recruited. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know much about um, what I really wanted to do for the rest of my life. So that was, you know, stressful in itself. Um, and then it was, it was big, like being in the, you know, when we went to recruiting tournaments, people, you know, having the colleges coming to look at you, that, that's a lot of stress when you're young and still don't know what you're doing. So um, yeah, definitely was stressful, had some tears, but um, I am glad, you know, I ended up where I went and I had an awesome experience. You had an awesome experience to say the least. You had an incredible career at Kane. And I think uh, last time when we spoke, uh, I mentioned I'm a numbers guy and it's good that you're a math teacher. So you're in, so your numbers, too. But your ERA is incredible and your win loss record is also absolutely amazing. You had an average ERA of one point four five. But the the numbers it, themselves in 2012, one point six eight, 2013, one point three four. 2014, 1.46, and 2015, your final year, it was actually at 1.36. So absolutely incredible numbers. What kind of led to you having that kind of success? Um, I definitely credit a lot of my success to my family and my past coaches. Um, my parents were always there for me during, you know, all the years of travel ball, all the years of training. Uh, my dad and I would always be out in the garage throwing in the basement or in the yard, always doing something all the time. I remember like 4th of July, right before we went to a picnic, he was like, all right, let's get on the field real quick. And it was like nonstop, but that, you know, made me into the player that I was. And I, if I didn't have that support, I definitely wouldn't have been, you know, as successful as I was. Um, and the coaching, I mean, I had a pitching coach growing up my whole life. Um, that was super consistent for me. I was with him often. Um, my high school coaches, my travel coaches, and then when I got to college, my college coaches, my, um, you know, Coach Acker was super um, successful all the years before I was there, too. And um, I knew I wanted to, 
you know, play for her success as well. And then my, uh, my pitching coach was actually my cousin too. So um, that kind of helped. We definitely kept our, you know, family things separated and whatnot. So it was, you know, we had, we're, we're really close off the field too, but um, she, she drove me, you know, to my, you know, not my breaking point, but she knew where to get me. And, you know, and like I said, it, it definitely, I wouldn't have been where I am without all of them. Absolutely. Another incredible uh, accomplishment that you had is you have you've thrown two perfect games and a no hitter. What kind of pressure is there like when you're in the middle of those games, especially nearing the end? I think it's one of those things where it's like you look at your teammates and we're all like, we know what's happening, but don't you dare say anything. Don't you jinx it. <laughs> um, but honestly, I live for that stress. Like I loved I loved pitching in games where it was bases loaded with the the you know, tied score. I, it was much easier than not easy, easier, but I just love for that. I know live for that like competition instead of, you know, winning by 10 runs. So um, yeah, I, it was just, like I said, it was like, nobody say anything. We all kind of know what was going on. If somebody went to say something, some other girl would be looking at her like zip it. Don't say anything. <laughs> um, but yeah. Of all the awards that you uh, amassed while you were at Kane, I can go through some of them national fast pits coach coaches, Associate, Association All-American, you NJAC Pitcher of the Year, NJAC Rookie of the Year, ECAC Pitcher of the Year. Which one of the accomplishments means the most to you? Um, honestly, my goal, you know, was to hopefully be All-American at some point, and I did get to achieve that my senior year, which was awesome. Um, I I mean, of course, the, the weekly awards, like the Rookie, you know, Rookie of the Week or um, Pitcher of the year. Those were awesome as well. I really, I don't know if I could put one over the other, but if I had to, it would definitely be, you know, the all American. That was, that was a goal going in. And I'm glad that's something I could leave with. You also had uh, several NCAA tournament appearances and you ended up playing in a world series. What was that kind of, what was that run like? Um, that was awesome. That was, that was another one of our goals, you know, make it to that national championship. And it was like playing like, like kind of like what you see on TV when it comes to, you know, March Madness or whatever. Like we went to the hotel and the hotel had, you know, our, um, tags with our names on it. Everything was like so official. And it was like, you know, after college, there's not a whole lot you can do with softball aside from coaching, you know, there's not really professional leagues or anything. So to make it to this big end of the year, you know, championship was kind of the highest you can go um at the d3 level so to make it there and then feel that like officialness and you know eating breakfast in the morning with your team at the hotel um just getting ready for like the day with the announcers and everything being streamed online and you know having i had my one cousin who's a teacher she was streaming it in her classroom like to the kids it was it was the coolest thing i just felt like you know almost professional like the closest we could get to something like that that sounds incredible so moving on to this, and when I, when I introduced you, I said that you were part of the Banish Athletics Hall of Fame uh, 2021 class. What, what did it mean to you that you were inducted with some people who were also your peers, including Marissa Robinson, Kevin Herget, and some of the others that were uh, inducted? Um, I was definitely honored, definitely lucky to be, you know, a part of the same group as those that were inducted at the same time. Um, Honestly, I, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to get that phone call. You know, it was that was that made my day, made my night, made my, you know, made my week. It was the coolest thing to hear. And, you know, getting to share it with my family and friends after it was um, definitely an honor. So you you also, al along with being a current high school math teacher, you're also a softball coach. What is it kind of like be, being such a great player in college? and transitioning to being a head coach? Um, honestly, like I said before, with there not really being much of a path after college softball, um, coaching is the next best thing. You know, I try to coach the player I was through the players that I have. Um, you know, sometimes I wish I could just grab the ball and get out there and do it, you know, like I used to, but definitely it's been too long. I don't know if I could do it like I used to, first of all. <laughs> um, but it's just like, I I'm big about the mental side of things. I like to talk to the girls about, you know, what kind of counts or like as a pitcher, the, the mental side to it too. Cause not, not a lot of that is always talked about. And I like to kind of learn it, like, you know, teach them from a younger age too. Um, 
but yeah, I love coaching. Um, I play slow pitch softball. It's still nothing compared to what it used to be, but, um, yeah, I'm hoping to coach for a while. Got one more question and we've already kind of heard him in the background a little bit. You are a new mother. Congratulations. Thank what, you. What is it like, you know, having, or having your own child? Um, yeah, I know. I, I should have said that earlier when he was, you know, making his noises in the background. But um, yeah, I have a three month old. Um, it is the, you know, I just said coaching is an awesome job, but honestly, it's so cliche, but being a mom is the best job. Uh, it's only been three months. Uh, he's, you know, the best. I, I love it. I wish I could stay, you know, home with him forever, but I do love teaching and coaching. So I'll be going back to that shortly. Um, but, you know, hoping that he uh, will get in the backyard throwing a baseball soon. We'll see. <laughs> Another amazing segment, Dorian. Thank you so much for that interview. It was very, very insightful. Now it is time to look at the week ahead. Playoff edition for the spring sports, Dorian. <laughs> to start us off, let us look at some baseball action. Unfortunately, as we said previously in the show, Kane kind of on a, sli on a slide to end the season, losing four straight. But they will be playing William Patterson in the playoffs on the road. Last time we saw William Patterson, it was a doubleheader at Jim Hines Field. The first one was a 13-2 trouncing of the Pioneers. In the second game, we lost by a score of 4-3. to three. Very unfortunate. On the mound for those games, the first one was Colin Kiernan. Pitched a complete game. Had himself a monster outing. In nine innings, pitched only allowed two runs with five strikeouts and two walks. Only two of those. Yeah, all, both of those runs were earned. In the second game, we had Diefenbach. Daniel Keenan and Gianni Morano on the mound. Diefenbach pitched five and point two innings, allowing four hits with uh, three strikeouts and three walks. Keenan pitched two point two innings with two strikeouts, and he got the loss for that game because William Patterson took the lead while he was on the mound. Unfortunate there, but I anticipate it's going to be the same thing. Diefenbach and Kiernan have been our two aces all year long. They've been atop the end jack statistically. And, and uh, in our hearts as well. So hopefully they can emerge from that with a victory and then come back to Kane for the NJAC tournament where they uh, look to pull off some upsets. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, on the other side, literally on the other side, we'll be talking about softball. They will be playing at, at Kane University versus Stockton in their first NJAC game on Tuesday, May 3rd. That'll be a very exciting matchup. The last time these teams saw each other, Kane actually swept the doubleheader. They won the first one seven to five. And in the second game that ended up being called in the sixth, Kane won that one eight to nothing. So, hey, Kane, Kane's got a real shot here. Don't want to jinx anything, but it'll it'll definitely be an exciting game to watch. Absolutely. Now going into men's lacrosse, Kane, as we said, secured the three seed, will be visiting Montclair State tomorrow to face off against them again. Last time they played was the season finale. Kane dropped that one by a score of 16 to 11. One thing Montclair State is really good at is face offs, and they really had the better of Kane, winning 22 out of 29. Definitely something Kane needs to improve on. They own that second quarter. So if Kane can just limit, the run, the runs that Montclair State goes on, they have a real shot of pulling off the upset and then seeing Stockton in the finals. Hey, it'll be well, again. No, no. I mean, you know what? I, 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 obviously, it's not a done deal. They're playing Rosemont, but in the CSAC, it's been pretty obvious all season long. The New Jersey teams heavily outmatch the Pennsylvania teams. I don't expect it to be close between Stockton and Rosemont. Uh, not in the slightest. Um, looking forward to women's lacrosse as well. They will be playing in the first round of the NJ playoffs. They will they will travel to Ewing, New Jersey, to take on the TCNJ Lions in the first round of the playoffs. Like we mentioned earlier, Jish, this was a very close matchup. The last time they played on April sixteenth, TCNJ did take that one, thirteen to nine. But there were some very good and positive signs from the Kane Cougars. In, in the game, and this is the playoffs. Anything can happen. All right, Jish, I had a very fun episode. Looking forward to a lot of playoff sports in this upcoming week. And, you know, it, it'll, it'll be fun, and 
before we go, I do know you have a very, very quick announcement. Uh, I'm so happy for you because you did commit to college. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, I do? Yeah. I, um, so as you guys may or may not know, I'm actually a high school senior. I'm part of the partnership program with UCBTS. So this was my senior year of high school, and it's been such a pleasure to do the Cougar Culture podcast and to, of course, call the games. But um, I did uh, apply and commit now to the University of or Syracuse University um, for the class of 26. I will be majoring in broadcast and digital journalism. And obviously, Kane's going to still be a part of my heart. I'm still going to keep up with Kane. There will always be my D3 team for sure. But um, yeah, I'm very excited to share that with you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a gracious audience and uh, for allowing me to be part of your family for this year. Absolutely. Just we wouldn't have had it any other way. Uh, I know we're all super proud of you and, you know, you're going to go on to do great things. Um, This was the Cougar Culture Podcast, everyone, and we will see you guys next time. Woo.